Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome, 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 one again, once again, to um, chat about how are you doing this evening? How has your week started? I trust it started well. Um, I hope you all are in good health and um, rearing and ready to go for another evening of talking. Um, as always, I'm doing a few bits and pieces. But, um, yeah, it's all good. <laughs> um, God bless you all. So glad to have your companies. And um, looking forward to another great show. So I trust you are rearing and ready to go. Um, we will be uh, uh, telling you what the topic is real soon. In the meantime, as you've just joined the show, please just press that share button and help us to share the show um, uh, all over the world, all over the place, all over social media, all over the internet, all over your radio. Press share, share, share. As soon as you join us, share. Send the 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 link to your family, your friends, your neighbours, your colleagues, your um, friends, your frenemies, everybody. Just share, share, and share again. Um, I will. Hang on. <laughs> I will be telling you. I will be in, uh, bringing on my co-host real soon as well. So I'm. Um, uh, not long from now, we will have everything up and running as it should be. Um, so yeah, once again, good evening. God bless you. Just share, share, and share again, wherever you are. Welcome to the Chat About Talk Show. Each and every Tuesday, if you're new to the show, somebody just told you to log on and it's your first time, welcome. Um, each and every Tuesday, we are here, God willing, between 8 and 10 p.m., no music, straight talking for two hours, and I'm uh, hopefully you will get involved in the conversation. All right, we're going to tell you what that is real soon. Just uh, bear with me. Um, uh, going to be bringing on me co-hosts as well real soon, so just bear with me, and um, we'll get the proceedings going. I see there's one or two of you already jumping on, and um want to get involved tonight i hope you really really will get involved tonight so we've got a great topic for you and uh, maybe it could have affected you maybe you've uh, been affected maybe you were the one that we're instigating um on what we're going to be talking about tonight um uh, whatever the case is um uh, we would love to hear your views your thoughts your experiences and um Anything else that you can throw into the pot, as long as you don't name any names or give any locations away, that was uh, that's okay with us. All right, no names, no locations, and um, uh, we will get the show on the go. Let me uh, bring my co-hosts on and see where we go with that. Um, Pastor Owen, how are you? Ah, blessings, my friend. How are you? Well, how are you, well, listeners? How are well. you, people out there? Mm. You're listening oh, well. to a tired, tired pastor tonight. Very, wow. very tired. Wow, you have been busy. We've had a wonderful, wonderful last two weeks. Mm. Uh, we've got so much to be grateful for. Praise we God. had an induction week for last. Yes. Uh, they inducted me into the church where I'm at. Praise and God. then last week, uh, we went through the, the Easter services, you know, the Monday service. Mm, mm, Good mm, Friday. Mm, 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 Good mm, Friday, mm. walk of witness. And then God. to top it all off on... Easter Sunday morning, we had baptisms. Man. Praise so the Lord. We had four baptisms and eight people come to membership. Praise God. So Praise God. We had a wonderful, wonderful time. Praise uh, the Lord. It just was drained, though, brother. I'm drained, you know. <laughs> but uh, I said I'm going to take off, to, take off today and yesterday just chill. But nice. No, didn't that's, happen. That's got so many other things to be done. So, but we're grateful. We're not complaining. Amen. We're you know, his life. There's, his a script, there's a scripture I'm always moved by. Um, passed away. It says, you know, um, uh, I will I will work the works of him, John 19. Amen. Uh, John 9, I think. That I will work the works of him was uh, was called me while it's day. Yes. Because when the night, night comes. Of, yeah, 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 yeah. No man can work. So no right more. now it's day, brother. So let us work while we can. You know? <laughs> That's right. Praise, Praise God. God. Praise God. That was a long way about saying that. Amen. Sorry. <laughs> I, know, I know the one. 
Um, we uh, hopefully will be joined with uh, joined by uh, Minister Kessler not long from now. God willing, he um, will be with us in living colours, live and living colours, and uh, everything should be working correct this week. Um, but we've got a great topic, Pastor Oin, this evening. Um, I hope so. I hope so. I, I hope you know what it is, because I don't know what it is. Oh, I know. I know what it is, brother. <laughs> yeah, it's something that's come to my mind many years, a long time ago, but it was kind of like uh, drilled home a while ago. So, mm. yeah. Are you ready? You want to share? Or yeah, share yeah, one? please. No, please do. Yeah. Um, uh, the topic tonight, or the uh, surrounding of the topic tonight, is um, um, when we come into Christendom, Christendom, you know, we think, many people think that they're coming to a world where everything is just done right and everybody plays the game fairly and rightly. The question is, uh, what we're talking about tonight is how and why do Christians, let me call it as it is, how and why do Christians rip off each other and, and rob each other my, my. and hurt each other in the way they do in many, many different ways. That's not only just Money-wise, you know, because we have many that borrow, borrow money. Mm. They drive miles to borrow money, but oh, they yeah. won't cross the road to pay you back. Oh, my, my. Uh, you know, they, they all kinds of businesses they try to do mm. and rob you blind. Mm. And then even when it comes to people like yourself, and like my experiences over the years, I'm sure you've experienced it, you've gone and you've performed, and then they won't give you no expenses, mm. but they promise you and they don't pay you, and... And, and we whip up each other left, right, and center. Go to the studio, you know what I mean? You get accused of this and that, and you pay your money, and you don't get what you ask for. Uh, I, I, I tell me where to stop. Why do Christians rip off each other and treat each other in such a bad way? Mm. And in the midst of while they're doing it, act as though, what's the problem? Like there's nothing wrong. Mm. You know, it's something that's happened to so many people over the years I've spoken to, but it's come uh, highlighted lately in so many things I've been around uh, and doing lately. Why do Christians think it's okay to rip each other up or set each other short or not do the right thing by each other or mislay the contract mm. and not do their part? Why do we think that we can do this and, and, and not have to account in church, we do the same thing. Now, you can be as big as you want about this or as small as you want about this, but it happens in Christendom. Oh, yeah. Why are we allowing it? Why don't we call it out? Now, there's a scripture that says that, you know, Christians don't take Christians to court. And I get that. But when some people behave in the way they do, you can imagine. You can imagine why these things happen. So that's the... Uh, the, 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 the the cooks of it tonight. Mm -hmm. Why do Christians treat each other, each other in such a bad way? We can take this as far as we want to tonight. You know, even about our behavior towards each other. Yeah. If we don't call it out. Oftentimes, we, it happens right in front of us and we don't say nothing. We have ministers that are ripping up the congregation. Oh, well, we have the congregation that's ripping up the church. You know, we have it all. I'm just wondering, on the conversation tonight, why are these things happening? And how do we feel about it? And what have we done to change it? Yeah. You know, and one thing it's easy for people to say, oh, you know, it's all right. You just have to pray about it. Well, you've just given your life savings or something. You know what I mean? Oh, sometimes they say things like, you know, well, you just have to forgive and forget. You know, that's easy to say when, you know, you you know, you you, you just lost your, your, your X amount of whatever you've given or time or energy or you don't work for someone and they feel they don't have to pay you. Take it as far as you want to, but this is what I want to speak about tonight. Why do we think it's all right for us to treat each other in such a way and call ourselves part of the people? That's the question. Okay. You've heard it, people. Um, we are asking the questions, why do Christians rip each other off? Let's keep it um, real tonight. Why do uh, some Christians, some Christians, not all, um, uh, maybe only a very small percentage, but it spoils it for the rest at times. What is that? Your own cup bar, sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> beautiful. Where, where's mine? Oh, beautiful. We are going to have to get one of you. My missus. <laughs> they in the white, mate. They in the white. Beautiful. I love that. I got it, I got it from a 60th birthday. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. nice. Yeah. Are you, if you're no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm going to have to get one. 
Uh, why do Christians rip each other off? Why do some Christians, Brother Charles, let's uh, get it right. Why do some Christians um, cheat on each other? Um, uh, or cheat others? Um, and feel no way about it sometimes. And when they're challenged, they, um, uh, they, they pretend like we shouldn't be doing this. Mm -hmm. This isn't right. Why are you why are you treating me like this? Why do some Christians uh, cheat on others? They're happy to pay the um what's the word the um the 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 the, the secular is it secular is that right? The, the, they're happy to pay the secular person or secular um uh, thing for the secular thing, but they ain't uh, willing to pay for the 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 thing or the person. Um, uh, in the kingdom. In the kingdom. Mm. Mm. Is that is that right, Pastor? Mm. That one, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're yeah, yeah. happily, you happily give um uh, the man down the road on the corner shop or the the high street or online um uh, something. But when it comes to your brother and sister in the faith in Christ, um, you're not dealing with them accordingly. You're not dealing them with them right. Why is this? Why do you do this? Has it been done to you? Have you been accused? Have you been accused of um, uh, treating hey, okay. your fellow brother like this? Minister Kessler, good evening. Hey, how are you doing, Brother Charles? I'm well, how are you? Not too bad, thank you. Nice, sorry, nice Praise Good God. to be here. Praise God. Bless you, bless you. I don't know if you can hear me. We can see and hear you. I'm uh, uh, nice, nice this week. We're not, we're, not, we're not live yet. No, we're live. We're live. Oh, we're live. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, yeah. Just move your you move your camera over <coughs> to the right a little bit, and uh, we'll have you nice and centered. To the right, to the right, to the right. Yeah, beautiful. Um, yeah. We, you, you know the topic this evening, bro. I I have well based on what I saw mm. um, in terms of our discussions. I believe that that's what the game is. So I'm gonna kind of I'm kind of if it's the same topic, which I believe it is about. Yes. Um, Christians ripping each other off. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's something that's kind of dear to my heart. Okay. <laughs> okay. So it's, it's going to give me an opportunity tonight to rant. Let off, I, 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 and I know, I, and I know you never get a good opportunity last week to, to, you never to get let an opportunity. Last week. <laughs> so, so we're going to get double double tonight, yeah. <laughs> double double for your trouble tonight. Uh, yeah. Praise Minister God. Josh, good, good to hear your voice, brother. Good to see you in the building. Good to see you, man. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. People, um, if you've just joined us, please share, share and share again. Just keep sharing the show as many times as you can. Great topic tonight. Um, uh, it's one that we don't shy away from. Um, some of these things don't get discussed in the church or in other forums, but we don't shy away from topics. All right. Um, especially if, well, it's not especially if, tr topics that are true and dear to our hearts. This is where we talk about them on chat, but why do some Christians rip each other off and feel no way about it? We're keeping it as real as we can tonight. Has it happened to you? Or is it something you'd rather not talk about? Have you done it to others? And then don't want to take the, the, the blame for it. It's not my fault. Why, why, why? Um, many, many uh, times uh, we've been uh, robbed by uh, people from outside. And yeah, you may have to take them to court. You may have to... Um, <laughs> you, <laughs> I was going to say you may have to call in the heavies, but we don't do that. Uh, <laughs> All you do? <laughs> the heavies. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, the yeah. pastor, the pastor. You might have to call the pastor in. Listen, listen. The bishop and the you're right. Laughing yeah. the, you're, laughing, you're laughing about only the heavies, but the thing is, in some circumstances, some people actually have the goal to, let's say, for example, if you lend someone some money, they actually have the goal to then give you attitude mm. to make you feel as if like you're stop, the one. Stop pressuring me, man. That's in the wrong, or they start acting like some bully. Mm, mm. I, I've been there. Where they want to just try to because you know you know 
when they when they connect themselves with certain people within the church, let's say you have a, ro- a guy who's come off the road mm. and now he's a Christian, he's in church and he connects himself with other like-minded brothers yes. who have come off the road, you know, so they have this kind of relationship because they feel they have something in common. So when they do, when let's say with, if one of them does something like that and then the, the person who they've done wrong to begins to challenge them, mm-hmm. they will try to give off this bad man type of road somewhat mentality. Forget about all of a sudden Christianity has gone out the window. Bearing in mind it was that same Christ like behavior that they portrayed that made you feel that they were Christian, that made you, let's say for example, help them in the first place. Because you're thinking this is my brother, this is my sister in Christ, you know, this is a person who's in need. They've asked me to help, I've assisted, you know, they give this story <coughs> and you go out of your way and you do it. But then now when it comes to the time of paying back, they now all of a sudden become a bully. And then they go around the church and begin to um, get their other little bad boy, bully type of Christian friends involved and want to try to, what would I say, railroad you or make mm. you feel as if like, you ain't getting back that money. And I'm thinking to myself. Mm. And what, right? and what are you going to do? What are you, you going to do as well? What, huh? what are you going to do? Huh? What are you going to do? I, uh, you ain't getting it back and what are you going to do? Well, the thing is, I pers- well, you know, I, well, I know it's, um, I'm, I'm talking a lot because I was hoping that Pastor Owen was going to, which I'm sure he will show in a minute. Um, oh, yeah. What oh, yeah. That, oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, was, I will talk about me. Mm. I've been through that situation twice. Um, and it was shocking. And the behavior from the individual was even more shocking because mm. they felt they done the wrong, but then they're going around the church and making out like giving people this story, even to the point where they became very disrespectful. My, my. And I was patient. I was patient. I'm, mm. I'm not going to lie. Mm. I was patient. Mm. And I thought, because in my head, I'm thinking to myself, you're going to either do the job or you're going to give me back my money. Mm-hmm. You could do whatever you, could do whatever you want to do. You could go around the Marbury Bush. And, one of, and, this, and, the, and the sad thing as well about this is that this particular individual was working for the church. Oh, boy. So you're working somewhat in close proximity with leadership and this is your behavior mm-hmm. so i just gave it time and every time i would see them it would just be one story after the other i just called up the church and just told the church this person owes me money and sometimes it can be difficult for the church because if you have made a transaction with somebody within the within the, amongst brethren sometimes the church in some cases it's like they can't really get involved because it was something that the church wasn't aware of the Outside, situation. Yes, they you were, they were in, the, in the middle of it. made the decision yeah. to help your brother or your sister, mm-hmm, but like mm-hmm. it can be a little bit challenging. But the fact that this person was working mm-hmm. for the church, and then not only that, they're serving in certain ministries. You're sitting up on platforms and you're talking about trust. And I'm sitting there thinking like, you owe me money and you're talking about trust. <laughs> and you're, you're saying all the right, right things. And, uh, and this is where we need to be careful because there's a lot of people, and I think we've said this before on the show, it's not everyone who comes into church is a Christian. Mm-hmm. You have people who come into church because they are, they are hustlers and they know that they can use, mm. they gifted with their mouth to make people believe. There's a word that says they have a form of godliness. And it's, it's all that manipulation and taking, taking advantage of people's vulnerability. Because there are people in church who are really good Christians, really trying to do the right thing. But then you have these individuals who see the vulnerability, they see the nice side of that person, and they take the person's nice side for weakness Weakness, and take advantage of them. And then they think it's okay, and they feel no way, and they will come into church, be lifting up their hands, rolling up and down on the floor, doing all manner of things. And and it's not not just, um, what would I say? leaders it's not just our members it's also leaders it starts from it, it's from the pulpit to the pew hmm. it happens from the pulpit to the pew one of the things i remember and i don't want to go on too much one of the things i remember i remember i was part of a particular ministry and that leader was 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 very integral in terms of um training us up as ministers and how we are to conduct ourselves and one of the things that they told us i don't want any of you ministers borrowing any money from anybody in the congregation. Hmm. That was one of the things that, 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 they, that the, um, the, the, the leader told us. I don't want you borrowing any money from any members within the congregation because it does cause a lot of problems. Um, 
And as I said, sometimes people use their position of power yeah. to take advantage of people. Um, and as I said, in my case, I just called up the church and said, listen, this person done X, Y, and Z. As soon as I've done that, before you know it, I got back half of my money. Wow. But then the following week, this, this, this is what I'm saying to you. Some of these individuals um, that sit in certain positions, sometimes I have to wonder if they're right in their head. The following week, after all of that happened, he, they, 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 there's a big old fiasco where they had a big, there, there was a service and they're prophesying to the individual. And I'm thinking, about how could this person be prophesied to after this? As far as I'm concerned, you stole my money. You took my money, but now all of a sudden you're getting big prophecy. I'm like, really? Because they go and they tell people lies. They don't tell people the truth. They tell lies. And then they want to, they, 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 they become the victim mm. and create this campaign for everybody to rally around them and for them to, and to feel sorry for them. That time, you're the one that's been damaged. You're the one that's been hurt. They haven't taken the time out to listen to your side of the story. Yeah. And sometimes, oftentimes, when I think to myself, like, mm, it, it can be damaging. It, it can hurt relationships. It can allow people to walk away from Christ. Um, it can allow people to lose faith and trust in other fellow um, brothers and sisters. They may see a need and they'll be like, I'm not lending you the money. Um, I think one of the ways that maybe we can, we can prevent some of these things from happening, and, and it's unfortunate, Maybe you need to you put it in writing. It it depends on how much, how much your what you have in terms of how much. Let's say if it's money, something monetary. It depends on how much money you're actually going to give to that person. Maybe you need to uh, put it in writing to say we've made an agreement that you're going to give me back X, Y, and Z over so over a certain period of time as well. Over a certain period of time, yes, yeah. and if that person doesn't add um, here to the contract, then you know you have le um, le legal grounds. To take it further, should you wish to do so, yep. there are some people who just who just give people um, money or, or monetary gifts or whatever it may be, just to help them, and they don't want anything back. And mm -hmm, that's absolutely mm -hmm, fine. Mm -hmm. But if you know that you've had a conversation with somebody or for somebody to do work in your property, and they come, they give you all the good talk in the preliminary stages of of, of the of the, the the organizing or the agreements that you've made. They say all the right things. They do all this that that. And then when they come now, let's say, for example, you get someone to come and do decorated in your house. They've agreed a fee. Yeah. OK, sometimes when you're doing certain decorating, certain things may emerge and you may discover that there is a little issue. And you may say, oh, because of this issue, we may need to do this mm -hmm. and the fee may go up. Mm -hmm. But in some cases, there's no fee. They start the work and then all of a sudden it's like the price changes. Oh, you know something? I never know it was going to take that long. You know, I never realized the room was that big. But you mm -hmm. came and you saw the property. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So why has the price changed? And then people just think to themselves, like, I've heard so many stories. But anyway, let me just stop there. <laughs> but I'm getting yeah, awesome, kind of, awesome. It's just building up. It's just revving the engine. Just building up. Yeah, I'm revving. <laughs> yeah, I'm just revving the engine. I'm just slightly pressing on the gas. All right, all right. So I'm gonna park right now and mm. stay neutral. Let's make the engine idle. Make it, make it idle for a little bit. Faster in. Um, I mean, so Kessler said uh, a lot there in a short space of time. Um, uh, things that's happened to others, things that's happened to him. Oh, um, gosh. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, he's only just, like they're just, just touching the pedal. Mm. I mean, you think about it, we've lived life, and it depends on what kind of person you are. Um, there are those that would never stand for it anyway. They wouldn't do it to them. You know, we have some people in the community who wouldn't dare wouldn't dare even try anything like that with them. You just wouldn't because you know you're going to pay a price, Christian or no Christian. And I thank God for them, you know. I think there's a place for that. But, you know, uh, as, as, as Minister just pointed out there, you know, uh, I've learned in my life now that we have to have a strategy of life because um, it happens whether you're in church or secular, so I tend to teach everything the same um, because I found secular people, when I say secular, I mean people outside of the body, as yes, it were. Yes, yes. Have treated me better, mm. more honourable, mm. more more fairer, Stick what to the you want to say, than those that are in the body. Mm. So we have to call a spade a spade. And then, and then I've also seen those outside who treat me very badly, uh, and, and those inside have treated me very well. So we've been we've we've had a, a mix of everything. I think a lot of it's to do with who we are as a person. Um, uh, everyone knows that I'm a wonderful person, and I'm a nice person. 
I wait for the hallelujahs now, brothers. Come on, come on. No, not as yet. Not as yet. Keep going. <laughs> Everybody knows that I'm a kind of very, very uh, a giving person, a very, very open person. Let me give you some real example. I don't make up stories. Never make up stories. Can could even check into the people right now today. Um, and you know, um, I have one guy called me one morning. I, I'm amazed at this happened. But one guy called me says, "Oh, brother. Oh, wait, when should he call me brother? I know we're something's gonna happen. What's gonna happen?" Or sometimes they come faster. Sometimes you can something's gonna happen, brother. Oh, and I, I need to see. I need to see. Okay, need to see. okay, no problem. Come see you. He said, "Can you just give me four hundred pounds?" I love the language that people use sometimes. Can you give me four hundred pounds? So I only asked the question. I said, "What makes you think I have four hundred pounds to give?" You know, when you use this terminology, you know, it's probably my um, legal school thinking. You know. What makes you think? Because I, I love words when people use those words, you know. Give me 400 pounds. And I said, what makes you think I got 400 pounds to give? For some reason, some people think everybody's a millionaire. And you've had as many chances as I've had. You've done many things like I have. Why should I be expected to have it and you don't? I've had the same issues of life that you've had. I probably had more. But yet you seem to think that I must have it and you don't. All right, one thing. I said, I don't understand why you think I have this money for number one. I don't drive no flash car. I don't have nothing really around me that so expensive. But that's all right. I understand. Now, watch me, guys. I've learned in life slowly. So I said to the brother, I said, my friend, um, you are a wonderful musician. And I took out my wallet and I gave him the money that was in my wallet. I had 40 pounds. And I gave him the 40 pounds. I said, you can have that. Because I don't borrow and I don't lend, right? I gave it to him. He said, I'll give it again. I said, no, no, no problem. If you give me back, you give me back. If you don't, you don't. But check it. There you go. That's what I have to give you. He said, but it's only 40 pounds. I said, I know. But you are a wonderful gifted musician, and I see you playing in all the country. Every church you're in, everybody calls your name. Everybody loves you. All you have to do now is go around nine more and get 10% of them. Because they love you. Just like I love you. So I'm just giving the opportunity to find these people. You see, some people love our gift, but they don't want to. Yeah, you, you understand. They love the gift you have, but they don't want to pay. You know? So I'm just saying. I'm just saying that in life, I've learned now. It's sometimes when we borrow, you might do a wave goodbye to. It's wave goodbye to. It. I mean, it's gone. So I don't tend to have that attitude anymore. If you get it back, you get it back. I went to one guy once, and I said to him, "I don't have." The, the hundred bribe you say. I don't have the hundred. But you know, brother, I've got twenty five. Let me just give you this twenty five. No, I need a hundred. Hmm. I said, I don't have a hundred, but I've got this twenty five. Take the twenty five. You can have the twenty five. But I need the hundred. I said, oh, no, but take the twenty five. And I'm just this is I speak, you know, thinking I'm, gonna, I'm giving you something. I'm not asking for it back. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to help you. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't enough. So even a little that I have is not enough sometimes. And you cussing me out because I'm giving you something that's not what you asked for. Think about that for a second. I'm giving you what I have, but it's not enough. It's not what you're asking for. So now I'm in trouble for not giving you what you're asking for. You couldn't write this stuff, man. You couldn't make this stuff up. So I'm trying to figure out, so how are we going to deal with life now? Like you said, well, you know, we've had some, I've gone to the studio, Man called my name, a true story. My name is the Owen Dodgy Page Bill, which is a lie. <laughs> and you listeners out there, all the studios know, if, you, if I owe you any money, you call me now. Let me know. And I, what happened? He said, Oh, Owen, I met the man, get him a car. I said, Come, come with me. I need to go and get something. He didn't tell me what He covered the car with me, and I drove to the person's house mm. who said this. And I called him and said, This man told me that you told him I didn't pay you for something. <laughs> oh, no, it wasn't you. It was another Owen. <laughs> Christian brothers. Oh, Lord. Christian brothers. So, hey, you, Joshua, are you, what are you saying? And I know many listeners have got the same kind of story, but we got to raise our game. We I'm can't, fine. you know, we can't do this for each other. What chance do we have when the, really? with the world, you know? Come on, man. It's a way if you don't mind, Pastor Owen, there was, as you were speaking, because I didn't really get a chance to really prepare for um, for tonight's show. Yeah. Um, as you were speaking, there were some other perspectives that came to mind as well. This even happens sometimes amongst gospel artists. 
gospel ministers. You know, um, you may, um, let's say, for example, go to an event to minister. Um, and, if, and each individual may have their... Because I've heard, I've, I've heard this... Okay, let me... Yeah, I've heard this amongst gospel artists, and I've also... You're, you're smiling, Pastor, so mm-hmm. you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I've heard this amongst gospel artists, and I've heard this amongst gospel um, ministers of music, where they will be called upon by a person to come and help them um, and assist them in uh, doing this event, this gospel concert. And a fee has been agreed. And I know sometimes in some cases, depending upon the how the event turns out, sometimes, you know, people don't show up. Sometimes, you know, it just doesn't work out the way it, it should have worked out. But as far as I'm concerned, regardless of that of, of the, 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 the that situation, if you know to yourself that you have put in on a concert, it's your job as the promoter to um, ensure that you have the money for those individuals that you have asked to come and minister at your event. Um, And it's important that you have that money aside to pay them. It's important that you have that money. I've done a series of events and no minister, no musician could ever turn around and say, because I'm very, when it comes to money and integrity, no musician, no, 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 no. Um, and I'm not bragging. I'm just, I just believe it's important that when you make an agreement, um, as it relates to you giving your words, I believe it's important that you honour your word. Um, and even if, as I said, sometimes events don't turn out the way and the money doesn't come in, it's important that you have that conversation with the individuals and say to them, guys, I know I said I was going to give you this or whatever, not give me some time. I can give you this now, but then I will follow up and give you what I need to give you later. In some cases, that doesn't happen. Some some individuals don't get a penny. Or and or if either they don't get a penny or people get different pay get paid different amounts. So what you're getting, that person's got it's it's it's, it's a whole load of I don't think and I've seen it over the years, a whole load of trickery. <laughs> a whole load of kind of, I call it scamming. <laughs> um, and in some cases, some promoters walk away with a whole lot of money and the people who assisted them <laughs> in the process of helping them to, 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 to for this event to be a successful event, they end up walking away with nothing at all. And, that's, and, and, it's, and it's, not, it's, not, it's not nice. It's not integral and it's not godly. Same with ministers who go to churches to preach. They may go, they may agree a particular fee or honorary room if that's, if that's your style of ministry, so to speak. They go, they minister. God really moves, you know, people's hearts are blessed. And then when, you, when, when it's time for you to, and it's not to say that you're doing it for the money, but we made, a, we made a prior agreement and the agreement was this. Or when you get home and you open up the envelope, let's say, for example, you agreed, that you were going to get a fee of 150 pounds when you open the lift up under you see 20 pounds mm. and you're like I, I drove all this way from london to birmingham <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and i've got a witness right there i don't know everybody's <laughs> quiet right now as I'm, as I'm, <laughs> uh, uh, I'm gonna give you a hallelujah amen on that one brother <laughs> uh, you've given all the way from london to birmingham and then you get here and you're thinking and sometimes you know Let's be honest. Sometimes some of us, some of us, some of us ministers and 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 and, and uh, of the gospel or whatever the Lord has called you to do. Mm. Sometimes we're struggling financially, yeah. but we're making the effort to. You, know, you understand what I'm saying, Brother Charles? And Pastor? We're absolutely, making the absolutely. effort to come and to support what you're doing. Mm. Um, and then, you know, you go to some of these places and they just turn around, twenty pounds, and you're thinking to yourself, like, "Oh my God, how am I going to get home?" Mm. And you're, and 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 this is the thing. Some people they don't they don't know what you're going through. They don't know what you're experiencing. True, true. And they just turn around, and there's no explanation. Or at the end end of the event, the promoters run up and down hiding. You can't find them. And you're thinking like, no. Or anyway, brother Charles, yeah, brother Charles, you know some story. You know one of our stories, which I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't even say. <laughs> Ah, yeah, 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 and you know, and you know what? The truth of it is, the story, the story remains the same. I mean, you yeah. guys, you guys are around now doing this business now. I mean, I thank God I, I moved away in 2008, and you, I want to hear better stories. 
But the because same story you're telling me, I could have told you the same, the same thing, same thing. So it's still going on. Nothing new. You know what? You, used to, you know, used to break, break my heart sometimes when you know we all used to come to support the big artists. Yeah, the big, you know the big art, you know the big yeah, art. Yeah, Everybody yeah, knows yeah, the big yeah, art. Yeah. The last, and they used to the last one, the last one. Yeah, 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 the last <laughs> one. They used to call upon us all. We used to go to support. And you say, I'm grateful, glad to be there. all well and good, yeah? But the problem is now, you draw 100 miles, whatever, mm. to be part of it. But you ain't getting nothing because everything's got to be given to the big artist. Mm-hmm. Say, well, but the big artist drinking is the same way like I do. Mm. I, I didn't get that, you know? But it was all put in together for the big artist. He must or she must have what they need. But you ain't no one. And I used to have so many differences of opinion. Differences where I couldn't differentiate. I used to say, well, I don't understand what you mean by big artists. <laughs> what I mean, that one's cost you so much to bring them in the first place. But I think you can't afford to bring them, leave them. Mm, you may not have an anointing here already. You know, but everybody does what they want. It's the same thing in the teaching arena. We won't pay the local minister, but we'll pay some big teacher from somewhere else and pay to go to the events as well. Uh, you know, it, it just starts to get a bit strange how come, you know, it, you know, these questions must be answered. Yeah. And I believe when Christ comes, we're not going to like the outcome. Mm-hmm. He's not going to like the outcome. Mm-hmm. You know, I think, I think, I think, I think this sermon, you know, we often talk about this sermon. Um, it's so, yeah, because as I said, some people will come to you as an angel um, of light, or they come, to, they, they're dressed as wolves in sheep's clothing. Um, and some of some of us, because we're just, we're still trying to do the right thing, we're trying to live by scripture. Um, am I my brother's keeper? You know, the Bible talks about that. If someone comes to your house and they knock your door and they they're in they're in um, in need of something, you know, and you know that you have it, give it to them. Um, don't turn them away, etc. So people are really trying to do the right thing. Um, and each context and situation is different. It could be monetary. It could be a lot of money. Um, sometimes people find themselves in so much different cir- situations and circumstances that you don't want to see your brother or your sister, um, you know, maybe lose their property or they can't, they don't have no food or whatever, not blah, blah, blah. But you've made a, an agreement with somebody. And I think it's absolutely important that when you make an agreement that you keep your word. And if you, if, if you, Let's say, for example, you've made the decision to say, I'm going to give the person back this at a particular point in time. And if you know that you don't have it, contact the person and just have a conversation with them. Don't see them in church or you're walking straight past them <coughs> them, mm. or you create a scenario where you become the victim. You're the one that's in the wrong, but then you create a scenario whereby you become the victim and the, uh, the person is the, is the perpetrator. They're the problem. But hold on, you went to them in the first place for help. Why would you do that? You know, it's just wrong behavior, and people need to be held accountable. Oh, yeah. I know in some cases, some people may make a decision to say, "Well, you know something, I've, I've, I've lived, I've lived by, I've lived, and I've learned by that mistake, by that experience, and I'm not going to go through that again." And some people just walk away and leave it and just get on. And I, make I, a decision. I think, I think not just. I, I think mm-hmm. sometimes, you know, now as we getting older, we're learning a bit more, and you yeah. know, we're a bit more experience, I would say, um, you know, in certain things. Um, I tend to look at things now, um, because let's just move it away from the the, the the artist thing, because that's already mm-hmm. there, we know that. Yeah. And we know when people, like you say, are struggling financially uh, and they have issues of life, which all of us have had at some point, and trust me, we've all been there. And, um, you know, they have a need. And, and I now realize that we also have a duty now, and people don't like to hear me say this, the, I have a duty not just to help you, but to teach you something that can help you not into that position in the first place. For I would say, when you've got someone needing some money for X, Y, Z, but they've still got the, they still got the VM, they've still got the 75 inch screen, they've still got the I, iPhone, they've still got all these, all these things. I'm not I'm having no problem with that, but I'm just saying, should be somewhere in your heart and your mind say, you know what, right now, my children need food. I might have to sell something. That's I right. might have to get rid of something. And that's true story I give you. I don't make up stories. I mean, I remember visiting the family before me, really struggling. And, and I'm always there trying to help and whatever, you know. And um, you do. And while I'm talking to the person, I'm looking at a 75 inch big screen. And the iPhone is ringing on the side. 
So my mind was just saying, everybody to their own. My mom was saying, well, you have so much around you. If you complain about needing 100 pounds, 50 pounds, mm. and, and we don't, we're going to starve and we don't get this 50 pounds. I know there's cash converters on every corner now. That's right. That's right. You know what I mean? Yep. Uh, and, and I don't think that'll be that precious, you know. I, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe somebody else is about to put me right. But normally I turn up to some farmers with a, a bag of food. How, you know, we always have food at church. How we always have food. I always carry bags of food in the back of my car. Mm-hmm. And I always carry trousers and uh, jumpers, you know, for the homeless or people, you know, yeah. for old, that are jumping, you know. Um, and people say, no, we don't eat that food, you know. <laughs> my daddy used to say, you're not hungry enough, you know, you're not hungry enough. <laughs> but, you know, they, they, they say we don't eat, and I get it, you know, some oh, types of food, but... Well, I don't know. When you're hungry, rice is rice. Mm-hmm. You know, I love my rice and corned beef, you see. So I'm just saying, I'm thinking of you know, corned beef and rice, man. You can make something with that. Something. Mm-hmm. But some people don't want that. They don't want that. And I start to wonder, where are we at now? Where, where are we at now? You know? So that's just coming out of that arena, into an arena where families are struggling. You know, um, you know, some families, they haven't got a TV. And I truly appreciate that. So we'll give them a TV. You'll get a TV. You'll get a TV. You know, the children need to have a bit of enjoyment as well. But when you say, but, <laughs> they, you know, they say, well, thank you for the flat screen, but it wasn't a, a, a Toshiba or it wasn't a Panasonic. It's not one yeah. thing. Yeah. And, you know, I, you know, I'm being facetious, but it's true. But this, you know, I'm, I'm, and I don't want to be blowing something. I'm just saying, mm-hmm. we try to help. But then you tell it's me not it's not enough. the make you want. Yeah, you know, I need some help, but it's not the make I was looking for. You wouldn't believe that would say it. and it makes you feel well you taking the mix you, you know why is that you, 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 you know ungrateful you, uh, you take it and then you find you don't have it the week after because you, you sold it to someone else or you yeah. give it to someone else you know I, it, it just blows your mind you know yeah. you, t- you have a need we're trying to help you with the need but if you don't help in the way that you require then I'm the bad person <laughs> yeah Oh, you come down the house, you know, with so and so, so. And you go, oh, hold on a bit, hold on a bit. I was trying to help. But I haven't helped you in the way that you wanted to be helped. Yeah. You see? Sure. Now my name's bad. Now I have a bad name, but makes you wonder sometimes, you know. Yeah. I think some terrible things to each other. That's the stuff. I think going back to what you said, you said something which is which is quite key, um, Pastor Owen, in terms of, um, okay, somebody may be in need, they may be in a situation, but you look, you take a, you take a, take, take a step further to look at, well, how can I help this person to get themselves out of the situation they're in so that they, they won't need to, let's say, for example, come to me again to ask for help? Um, and as you said, you made mention of sometimes you go to people's places, they're driving the big car, the big house, the big this, um, whatever not. And I, it, it just brought, it reminds me of a scripture. Um, and I, I don't really want to take the scripture out of context, but it, the woman who had nothing good house and the prophet said to her, what do you have in your house? And she, she said, I have a little bit of oil. Mm. Yeah? So sometimes we have things that we can take. And sometimes, even as you mentioned, cash converters, you can go to cash converters and you can loan it and you can get your, you can get your item back. But in that moment, to get you when you a, have a, a bad need, situation. Yeah, if you have a bad mm. situation, temporary, you may temporary. need to make sacrifice. Temporary fix. To say, well, you know something? I've got all this jewelry. Mm. Yeah? yeah, I don't mean I, don't, I may not need to, to to pawn all of it, but I can pawn some of it that will be able to see me through to the next month or whatever, or until I get my myself back up on my feet. Yeah. Um, but then what we what we, you know because I cause, um, as as I think that's such, such a powerful thing as a leader it's important that yes we don't we, you know we have some type of benevolent benevolent fund or whatever we have in our churches or whatever to help and assist people. But then the thing is, I want to be able to open up your eyes for you to be able to help yourself going forward. I don't want you to, cons- to co- consistently remain stuck in this situation. It may be a thing where you may need to get a job or you may need to make some sacrifices or make some changes as it relates to your life. Maybe you're living this high life like, because you want to impress um, the Joneses and maybe you don't need to live that high life. Maybe you just need to just say, you know something? I don't need to impress anybody. And there may be certain things that you may just need to, to part with. I know many Christians who um, 
I think one of my uncles, I know he was somebody who had a lot of stuff, a lot of jewelry, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. And as, he, as, when he, as, as the Lord started to work on him, there were certain things that he just felt that he just didn't need anymore. You know, sometimes we have more than enough, but then we tend to go to other people and um, want to get what they, or, or, or look at other people and want to take what they have or get what they have. Yeah. And it's like, well, you've got, you've got more than me. It's like, you know, you know, you know in some cases, you know, you may live in a council, council flat, you're trying to make ends meet, you, you have a, um, a friend or, or someone who's got a big house, big car, and you desire to have those things, but yet they're looking at you as if, like, you have more than them. And you're thinking, like, oh, my God, I really wish I had my own place. I really wish I, I could have a car. I really wish I could, you know, go on these big holidays, but I can't. But then you're looking at me as some type of threat in my, in my small council property, um, that I'm trying to to excel into putting myself on the property ladder, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's so many different dynamics mm-hmm. that go on. But I want to come back come back to the point of the conversation where um, where we are talking about why do some Christians have this tendency to rip each other off when it comes to finances um, or whatever it may be. Someone comes to help you, you make an agreement, and then you don't honour the agreement. And then you either ignore the person when you see them or you create a scenario where you become the victim or you begin to tell lies. Right. Yes. You begin to tell lies mm. <laughs> to make the person look bad and everybody starts looking at the person sideways and you know that you are in the wrong. Yeah. Why do we do these things? Is this right? Are you somebody um, who has been in this situation where you've been ripped off, where you've been um, treated a particular way. How did you deal with the situation? Did you walk away and leave the situation? Did it allow? You, did it make you walk away from church, or did you confront the situation? We would like to hear from you tonight. It will be interesting to hear what you have to say Absolutely. as it relates to tonight's conversation, because I think it's important. Because this it, this conjures up so much different, um, so many other things. It can leave people traumatic. It can leave people with church hurt. It can leave people feeling. All, 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 um, all different types of, um, um, all different types of emotions going on um, in their in, in their mind and in their heart. So it will be interesting to hear what people have to say tonight because I think it's a very serious topic. To be honest with you, as much as we're having some laughs, some people's really been hurt, bro. Some people's really been hurt. Yeah, um, yeah. by it, um, uh, and uh, especially if uh, maybe some of their other family members aren't in the church and they've had to step up. Mm-hmm. to try and sort the situation out and it just got messy. I'm pretty sure that's happened as well. It, I would even I would even take it a step further by saying that even some people you know like when they when and and, and this is not an attack, we're just we're just giving perspective. Yes, yeah, yeah. When there is a need in the church mm-hmm. and then you are told, Oh, we need to raise funds because let's say for example, we need to fix the roof because you know it's always the roof. It's always um, the roof. and then people go out of their way within the congregation, go out of the way, they give the money and then the thing is, the roof You'll hasn't never been get fixed. fixed. But, then, but you've given all this money. Where's the money? And then when you begin to ask questions, mm. you then comes an issue. We had to spend it. We had to, to spend it. Question. Mm, questioning the. You, questioning you, we the, are asking a question yeah. for, you know, God, and then you start bringing God into it. No, 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 no. no. Let's, let's let's keep God. Oh my, let's just take God out of the equation right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You said that you wanted us to sell this particular money for mm, this particular mm, thing, mm, yeah. and we've done it because this is our church, mm, this is right. our community. We want to see mm, the development and the growth of this establishment or whatever that right. is. We believe in what you're saying because you said God has given you this, and we're sowing, and we've given, and then now we can't see the manifestation of what you said. So we do have a right to ask questions. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hello? Oh, yeah. Somebody? Oh, yeah. We do have a right to ask questions. We do. Oh, Totally. You know, you can't then turn around and then when we're asking questions, you want to shut us down and tell us to, and, and start to treat us um, as if like we are we're attacking you. No, we're just we're just asking you um, what's happened to the finances that you told us that needed to fix the roof. We want to know how come the roof hasn't fixed. Where is the finance is gone? And I know sometimes in some cases there may be a different need, a more important need that may have arisen. You need to convey that. It's communication. But you convey, convey. I totally agree. Convey to the people. I mean, I yes, totally agree with that because how many concerts you could name that you've been to to raise funds to fix the roof and help them build a church? Because someone's going to be trying to build a church. 
and you've got all your spend, your time. Those are the concerts that we do for free. But I do. We went for free, paid our own money to get there, things, do what we need to do, and you raise funds. And then you're here, they took the money to pay for some big artists to come. All of it, all of it. We, we paid for them. We just helped you to raise the money for this. Now, the same way that you come to me and ask if we would help to raise the money to fix the rules, the same way you can come to me to say, can we use the money to get the big artists? Thank you. Same thing. The same conversation. You know, that's why I say, whenever in church, this is my way, when we're in church and we ask for raise the funds for something, when we buy the item, we have a service. To thank God that He's provided Amen. that item. Amen. You know, you know. You, I think the last thing we had in the church was um, a, a, a communion table, communion table, and you know, people give. We thank God for good people that give because they want to see God work grow. But it doesn't help when we the thing that they thought they gave to to have. It, it, that's the way it is. Ten years later, see what happened to that, and you're asking for something else in the meantime. <laughs> something else. Something else. God said, God said, God said, this is, you know, you know, I have to say, forgive me for my, this is me. You know, people come and say things like, God is doing a new thing. Mm. God is doing a new thing. What happens to the and old my thing? question will always be, what happens to the old thing? <laughs> we can even finish the old thing we did, but we started a new thing. And of course, God, God is doing, doing, new, God is doing a few new can. things, but it looks a fix. But you, you're, you're not going to get around me by saying, oh, well, God's doing a new thing, so I don't have to bother with the old one. Mm. No, man, that, that can't work. That's why I come back to what you were saying about us teaching. There's a saying, isn't it? Teach a man to fish your feet in for life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But nobody don't want to learn to teach, but we need to teach about the fish. Mm. This is why I say sometimes with people, you know, they say, well, I'm praying. God, God forgive me from out of order, you know, because sometimes my mouth. But you know when people say, well, I'm praying for a new job? I said, that's a good thing. Well done. But before you pray, how many application forms have you filled in? Well, I haven't filled any in. <laughs> how many places have you applied to? Well, I haven't applied to any. God shall you supply have all my needs. I don't have no qualification. <laughs> but God can provide. God, God shall supply. Listen, <laughs> Jesus walked on water, but 99% of the time he took a boat. Mm. That teaches us something. We think we want to live in the supernatural. Everybody wants to live in the supernatural. You know, and I'm for the supernatural. I believe in miracles. But most times, I have to get up and go to work. Most times, I have to save the money to buy the item. You know? Lay hands on this and you will have it tomorrow. Sometimes we have to work hard to pay the money for it. Yeah. You know, we got a piece of people. Piece of people. But, you know, again, again, people, just, let, me, let me just go rip off somebody else, take his money and go pay for the thing I want. Mm-hmm. In the name of Jesus. No, 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 no. And I think, I think that's one of the sad things, um, um, Pastor Owen, is when we use God as the faith. Of what we are doing, yeah. and it's yeah. like, really, we use yeah. the name of God. We use the name yeah. of Jesus. God said, yeah. God said this. God said that. God is doing a new thing. And as you said, what happened to the old things? So the old yeah. thing now, but we haven't completed the old thing. We haven't com- because God now is doing a new thing. Mm. And sometimes what that is, it's a form of manipulation, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, because yeah, it's, yeah, getting, yeah. it's getting people to forget about the old thing, mm. and now we're focusing on this. Yeah. This now becomes the new thing. So this is what we're focused on. And then a couple of years later, a, cu- a couple of months or before the year's end, all of a sudden that, that becomes the old thing. And it's another thing. God is doing a new thing. That's right. That's right. And how, many, like, how, how many half done things have we got now? How many half done things have we got now? And they said, they don't, don't, take the, the, don't take the Lord's name in vain. Mm-hmm. You see, Josh, you, you, know, you, you, you know, when we, when we, when we um, challenge something, or when you call it out, you're called aggressive That's or right. separate, mm. separate division in the church. That's not division in the church. We just need to call it out. We need to stop it. We need to stop it and raise our game. Because at the same time, when we raise our game, we raise their game too. Yeah. It's a good thing. We need to stop it. You know what to be done. Thank you, Lord. Great topic, yeah. um, uh, gents. Great topic. Um, hopefully, uh, uh, we are going to hear from uh, the listeners, the viewers. Um, uh, tonight, if you have been affected by uh, uh, anything you've heard this evening, if you want to add to what you've heard this evening, we would love to hear from you. 
what can be done about these people? Can something be done about these people? Do you need help changing? Are you the one that's been doing all the ripping off? Do you need help? <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. Yeah, they did. The Bible does talk about Jacob. Well, Jacob was a deceiver. Mm. Uh, well, people. we want to hear from you, people. We want to hear from you. Um, uh, an, an hour's gone. Um, you've heard what the topic is. I'll put the topic in the chat. Um, let me just tell you, for those that's on the radio and not listening to, not watching the screen. So, um, we have asked tonight. We're talking about, should I say tonight, believers, Christians, who rip each other off and feel no way about it. Um, an example, lending money and not paying it back. Don't pay the fee that was discussed for services. And other things. And other things. We're going to try and hear from you. I'm um, uh, see what you've got to say. We're going to play the disclaimer and um, uh, we definitely will delve in a little bit deeper. So let's do this. Disclaimer. This group takes no responsibility and will not accept liability for any communication via discussions or other modes of communication from individuals or as a separate entity that causes offence. We do not aim to purposefully generate anything that is intentionally malicious or slanderous. Our aim is not to provide misleading information that could lead to harm of any nature. Interact and call the studio on 07 534 610 You can't hear me. Hello, can you hear me? Um, okay, um, let's see what's going on. One second. Stay, stay, stay right there. Stay right there. People, call us. Uh, just hang off for one second. Let's uh, see what's going on. I think we've got a, a little technical issue here. But you know what the topic is. Um, I think the phone line system is just rebooted. So let's uh, get that rebooted. Um, apologies, apologies, apologies. Um, let's see if we can get this back up and running. Pastor Owen, where are you? Can't see you, sir. Um, uh, stay there, Josh. We're coming back in a hot minute. Okay, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Um, Yeah, um, let me just have a look at it while we're waiting for the phone yeah, line. This is Owen. Pass I'm not Owen. available I, at the I, moment. I, oh, you call, oh, is it? Oh, one second. Um, uh... Oh, wow. 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 Okay. Let's see if we can do this. I think there's, a, there's definitely an issue that we need to take care of in the next couple of weeks. We are going to... Uh, have to upgrade the system but let's uh, see what we can do in the meantime just bear with me bear with me callers okay in the meantime let me just read some of these uh messages let me read a couple of the messages that's what i think we need to do um whilst we're waiting for the phone lines to reboot um word do not understand why people do these things and call themselves christians but I guess people do not regard the word Christian. Um, uh, blessings. Uh, many a time money is people's God. Wow. Many a time money is people's God. Uh, Real talk minister. Um, boop, 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 boop. Uh, churches are just not the same. Some are like clubs. Uh, yeah, a lot of damage can be done when money is involved. If a contract needs to be written up, do it. Um, let's see if there's any more. Let's just check this line as well. Uh, okay. Um, it depends on the person. 
people can be ungrateful these days. Um, uh, Christians, I get what you mean. I get what you mean. Is uh, okay. Phone lines are open. Pastor, any there? Sorry, got cut off. This. That's all right. That's all right. We're hopefully back with each other now. Josh, you there? I'm here, bro. Wonderful. Okay, people, phone lines are now up and running. You want to call in? Please do so. Let me give you the phone line number again. Disclaimer. That's not it. Let's uh, do this. Let's do this. And uh, uh, do this. Interact and call the studio on 07 534 610 422. In interact and call the studio on 07 534 610 422. What are your experiences? What um, uh, has happened to you? Are you going through something right now and you've had to call in the leaders, the elders, the ministers as witnesses? Have you had to, um, have you had to uh, seek counsel for a situation that's happened to you? How did you deal with it? How did you overcome it? How did you resolve it? Pastor Owen talked about we uh, the Bible and saying that we shouldn't we shouldn't take each other to court. Have you had to take somebody to court? <laughs> have you had to take your brother <laughs> to have you had to take your pastor to court? <laughs> hey, hey. You, you sold a large seed. <laughs> Listen, I know. Listen, I know stories where people are taking leaders. To court. We 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 may very well laugh about this. We we may very yeah. well laugh about this. Yeah. Mm. Have you had to take the church to court? I'm pretty sure there's a there's, there's going to be more than one story. There was there was a story. I'm mm. um, if you guys seen it online. I'm not going to call out the particular the actual leader's name. Mm -hmm. There's a story online where a leader conned a member of their church out of a whole lot of money. Wow. And they ended up, the, 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 they, they took, the, I think the member took the, I don't know if it's the member or the person, the family members of that um, particular person took the leader to court and now the, the, the leader's in prison. Wow. And I'm, not, I'm not talking about little bits of money. I'm wow. talking about a whole lot of money. Wow. You a go, whole lot. You but go. you know that in America, the law's different. As soon as you do something, they just, they, they're quick to sue. Different different culture and the way they do things out there. But yeah, mm, serious. the person had to take the leader. To, yeah, it was a lot of money. Now the leader's in prison. Serious. What would you do? What would you do with your brother? What, would you just write it off? Would you just write it off and leave them to God? What would you do? If you were dealt with like this, how should you deal with this? What's the correct way? Is there a correct way, way to deal with this? Have you had to come to blows? You just said enough's enough. Uh, put this Christian thing to, to the side for a little while. Did it come to blows? Was that the only way you could sort it out? Did other family members have to step in because they, they realised you were being taken from, for a ride? You're being walked over in the name of God. Are you still being walked over in the name of God? You've lost so much. You are now without worrying about how you're going to eat, pay your bills. And the other person that you helped is living a lavish lifestyle. Don't care about what you're going through. And you were the one that helped them. Now they're okay, they don't want to know. How do you deal with this? Have you had to go through this situation? Why do we do this to each other? Do you think it's okay? 
Give us a call. Interact and call the studio on 07 534 610 422. So many instances of um, uh, it being done to uh, people in the church. Um, we're not exempt. It happens every second of the day outside the church. Yeah, what, what, what makes yeah. you think it won't happen in the church? Yeah. Are you just uh, naive to think that it doesn't happen? Because this is the church. This is a godly place. You're protected by the law of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. God is watching so that it wouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. How did you deal with the situation? If you have been through it, let us know. Go through it. Yeah. No, so that's why no comments. Then no one's speaking. No one ain't saying. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, there are comments. People are listening. People are logged on. Uh, I mean, I just don't know. I think um, got a load of popcorn eaters to that. Just here for the. <laughs> uh, as you have said, we learn from our experience and have issues. Let's take this call. Hi. Good evening. I'm Brother Charles. Good evening, sis. How are you? I'm all right. I'm wonderful. All right. I'm wonderful. Listening. This is really a, a touchy topic. It is. It is. Because, um, as I said in the comments, I don't understand our brothers and sisters in Christ and wish God we were even serving mm. because Christ didn't act like that when he was a nurse. No. The nurse, so we know that in this world, in this time, we need money to, to survive because that's the currency. Mm -hmm. of the world but um we we are greedy you know we are greedy and we always seem to want more more than what we even need um one day i was give you a bit of story i'm not gonna be long can so, you hear me still that's okay yeah we can i have a church brother in my church and one day many couple of years ago that's before the pandemic mm -hmm. i was um coming down Westby Road and I saw him and he greeted me nicely and everything and he then he said, Oh sister, you know, um I need to pay my rent and um I'm just borrowing eight eighty pounds from you to make up and I'll give you back in two weeks time. Mm -hmm. Two weeks come he didn't come to church. Didn't see him for about a month. And I didn't call him. As I said you came to me, it's not that I had the money, mm. you know, but I still help you out. Yeah. And then um, pandemic came in not long after, and he communicated in me, with me on the phone to say that he moved out of London because he can't afford to pay <laughs> his rent in London. And then I didn't hear nothing more from him. Now, for the past year, yeah. or the past two years, he started coming back to church. Mm-hmm. Said, hello, how are your sister? And I heard nothing of my wow, money. Wow, nothing wow, at all. Wow. Of my 80 pounds. And mm. I didn't, I have asked him because I said, you know what? There will not be another time. And that's how I am, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I use, I use my experience. I'm not saying that I would help. I would help people. Yeah. But that person would never, can never come back to me and said, Sister Dayan, I'm in this. You know, you will never. And then about, I think he's, Conscience was killing him because I didn't ask him it. You know, yes, I didn't ask yes. him anything. And about um, about two months ago, he came to me and he said, "Oh, Sister Dayan, you know, unfortunately, I cannot give you back that money." That's what he said. Unfortunately, is he is he is he um has he got a crystal ball? He can look into the future. Maybe. <laughs> that means that he can't work. He can't do nothing. He can't do. He, he said, unfortunately, he cannot give it back to me. You know what I said to him? I said, it's okay. Because in my mind, I know that he can never, ever, ever. Mm. And I come know my God yeah. is not going to get to me because of that. No. He no. can never come back to me. Mm. You know, I've seen it even in church where we are raising money for the church because the church need money and we are baking cakes and selling and everything. Yeah. And when you, when you try to sell a, a piece of cake for a one pound fifty. They're the hustling you. They're saying, "Oh, why is it one pound fifty? Mm, that's fifty what? pence. That's only worth fifty pence. 
it's a church. Why are you selling it for one pound fifty? Mm. And I'm saying in my mind that you will go to this to the to the corner shop and buy it for three pounds. Yeah, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yet still for the for the church. Because it's because it's sold in the your, church. Yeah. But building up of your church. Always, always. You don't want you don't want to pay one pound mm-hmm. fifty. You know, so, you know, I've burned many ways. I'm trying to do my cooking business. Mm. And people come and they said, can you cook for me? And I'll, I'll pay you. They didn't even pay me. They just mm. pay me for the ingredients. I gave them the receipt. <laughs> they don't pay me for my car. My, my Traveling, to traveling, yeah, yeah. How many miles to them? They didn't Your pay labor. me. Mm-hmm. For my labor, they didn't pay me for gas, electric, nothing. They just pay for the... And the, mm. uh, the, 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 the stuff that I mm. buy in the shop. What they think it's worth. And they said, Wrong. and they are big chefs. They are big chefs. And when they charge money, when, when if you, if you have, uh, if you, you know, get their service, they are sending you the, the, invoice. the invoice. Invoice. The invoice. The invoice. The invoice. <laughs> people do anything. <laughs> with, yeah. the, with the disclaimer at the bottom as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and then and then me that are trying to come up mm. to build something, you're tearing me down, and that really puts you off, you yeah. know. Because when you when you get a four o'clock in the morning, mm. you have to call that food, yep. and then bring it, and then you have to stay and share, and all of that, and then at the end of the day, they're telling you, 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 you they, they don't pay you. You wait, you wait three, four days, you wait for a week, and the money that you use is to pay another bill. Mm. So, I don't know why our own people, our own, you know, we're saying that we're Christ-like, but as I said, Christian, the word Christian, they don't regard it as nothing nowadays. Mm, mm, no. Mm, mm, mm. No. My my advice to, my advice to you, uh, my sister, would be this. Going forward, and maybe you have done this, maybe you have put this in place, in terms of your business, my advice to you is that you have, let's say, well, for me as a, as a, as a minister, as a gospel, well, I don't like to say gospel artist, but as a minister of the gospel, I have a booking form. So if somebody's um, uh, asking me to come and minister or sing at their event, they have to go through, I have a booking form that I send to them, and they have to, let's say, for example, agree to the terms and conditions, they have to sign it and return it. And I think this is something that is unfortunate that we have to put these things in place to safeguard yeah. ourselves and for people to really respect yeah. um, value, your business. Value, respect value. And value, that's the word, mm. my brother Charles, mm. to respect and value what you are trying to do. Yeah. You have to have something. So when people want to book you, they say they want you to do provide this particular service where you say, well, I can provide this service, but this you have like a, a, like a mini little contract. Nothing major. This is my yeah. fee. This is my prices. If you want the services, then you have to, um, so to speak, sign and return to confirm, and this is the fee. So, so, yeah. so now they're held accountable. So they can't turn around now and be like, oh, because that used to happen to me a lot. I used to go and minister, and I love to minister. And, mm-hmm. and the thing is, everybody knows me. I'm not motivated by money. Let me just, mm-hmm. People know me who know me, not motivated by money. And I will help and I will assist. But it came to the point where people, unfortunately, my brother, some of my brothers, brothers and sisters in Christ, they were taken advantage yeah. Yeah. of my gift of my gift and it's not right and you know you have to put certain things in place yeah. to safeguard what you're trying to do because what it will then do you will then become discouraged and you will then say you know something i'm not doing this no more and that's that's what happened uh, um that's what happened to me because i'm just no. saying i'm straight up i'm trying to do something mm. and yeah. then these people are just coming and just and i'm working it's a hard work it's not like and they'll never and the thing, they'll never try that in the shop you know so they'll never go to no. the shop and try that <laughs> can you can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is about it, you you do it because you need the money. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. You do it because you need the money. You didn't do it because you you say I love to cook. You understand? So it's not. But if if I need the money, you understand? I'm gonna do the thing. And but I don't. I I still can't understand the mindset of other people. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. Totally. And really I'm saying. You, if you said you are um, Christ one, you should not be doing that to your to your brothers and sisters, robbing them mm. knowingly. And it's like you set up, but you know what? The enemy comes, kill, steal, and destroy. Mm. And as you said, there are wolfy sheep clothing that yeah. came in, you know, using the word of God and 
Jesus this and nobody can come and tell me that I should I should sow twenty thousand pounds and tomorrow I'm gonna get it back. Where is it coming from? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, we to, sometimes we have to use our 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 discernment and yeah. our own knowledge. Yeah. You understand? No twenty no twenty thousand pounds doesn't just come out of here. You no. have to work. <laughs> Anyway, that's my, my little bit. God bless you, sis. Thank, Thank you. you for sharing your experience. <laughs> Have a Thank great you. day. God bless. Okay, right. bye for now. Interact and call the studio on 07-534-610-422. Has this happened to you like it's happened to our sister? Um, uh, have you been uh, taken advantage of um, in the church? Have you, um, uh, have you had to uh, have words? Just to get back what what was uh, due unto you, what was promised to you, what was agreed to 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 take place. Why do you have to go through all of this? I I I smile that um you know we use terms like the brothers and the sisters in the church, and mm. sometimes you wonder are they our brothers and sisters when they treat <laughs> each other like this? You know you have to wonder sometimes. Wow. But I I I feel for the sister because she's right. She spoke to what she's saying because. Why Why do we have this thing that we've got to try to get away with as much as we can? But we, you know, it's like I said about the Christian of now. Let's live as close to the world as we can. You know, get away with the we don't go into. If you with me. I, I was saying something about, uh, you know, we have funerals and everything at church, weddings, whatever. And uh, I had a lady complain because every, every church they charge for the use of the building. Because cleaning and everything else got to be cleaned up or whatever. And I, I was trying to explain to someone about the cost of the building. And, and they got so um, upset. Sorry, Pastor Hello? Owen. Hi, Sister Liana. Sorry, Pastor Owen. Just uh, bear, stick with a stick up in there. <laughs> Sister, oh, good Sister Liana, good evening to you. Apologies. Uh, hi, Mr. Uh, Charles. Good hi. evening. Hi. Uh, Pastor Owen and um, Minister Joshua, how are you? Bless you. Uh, bless you. Thank oh, you. Oh, we miss you on Friday. <laughs> who me? Who me? Yeah, you, we didn't see you at the main promotion. Yeah, no, I was, I was, I, well, I was, I wasn't going to say anything, but I was away. I was in the wonderful <laughs> island of Jamaica. Uh, uh, hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, 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 you over here? Hey, 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 nobody saying they're missing me. Nobody missing me. <laughs> I said, I mean. Oh, I never got no ticket. I never got no ticket. Never give me no ticket. Both of you were missing. Both of you were missing. Actually, we had a lovely, fantastic time. Praise be to yeah. God. Praise yeah. be to God. Yeah. You know, we were, we were we were actually on the top of uh, the list. You know, obviously, like um, outside church, it was fantastic. We had a ball. I had fun, it was spiritual, it was everything that, you know, your heart's desire. Praise you know, as really? You call it a night out. And the more that um, practice that, we stayed overnight and we were able to have fellowship on the Saturday during mm-hmm. breakfast period. So we make a lot that I oh, nice. normally call into the show, but not seeing their faces. So we had the opportunity to meet each other, and it was really lovely. Amen. I take my house off to the men of promotion. Brother Charles done an excellent job, he and his family. So um, Thank you, I'm really happy. I'm really glad I did go on. Uh, okay, the topic, very touchy topic, yes. right? And um, as for myself, been around church for such a long time, and I've seen um, so much, you know. We have lost the spiritual aspect of what Christ like is really when we come to money, and especially, I don't know, speak about the body of Christ. Uh, we've lost that, you know, the fear of God is not there anymore, hardly. This was really something that I really, really, really wanted to talk about, Brother Charles, about how we lost that, you know, fear of God. We don't have that, you know, like we have our brothers and our sisters. That's, um, it's like he doesn't Joshua carry the same weight that. anymore. He doesn't carry the weight like he used to. Yeah, and, mm. and basically... Um, they come, you know, you, you'd find, like uh, they said, it's not everybody that comes into church are, are Christian. That's but right, that's still right. at the same time, you might be in a position that you, you see that person need help and you reach out to them mm. to help them and they let you down. So I've seen that over the years. And um, myself, it happened to me, like this first call I had just called in. I, as a florist, I used to do a lot of weddings. And so basically... Um, 
like what I was doing is like um, the, whoever comes in and um, whatever they have a plan, they have a plan what they would like, and so they draw up the plan and see how much it would cost. Um, they, 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 um, whatever they ask is, is individually priced. So they want five of that, you know how much it is. If you want one of that, how much it is. And so we had no problem there, actually. The funny thing is that basically when they collect this stuff, they actually give me more than what I asked for mm. because they didn't expect to get that quality or that amount of work, what they would probably go to a normal shop. Wonderful. But what I was doing, I was trying to help them by like decorating the church on a Friday night. And the, the churches that they use, the church that I, you know, is one place, okay? They have a service in on a Friday, so they don't leave until about half nine. And I have to go in, and I live a long way. After. I have to go in, mm -hmm. and you're talking about making an arch, mm -hmm. and you talk about draping the aisles, both sides of the aisles, and um, I'll say to them, okay, it's, it's, I'll charge you. I won't be charging you for that. I'll just throw that in for you as a gift. And so I was doing that for a while. And it comes to the crunch, um, guys, that I was doing it, and they started to take liberties in a way that I remember two people I was crying. And what time are you coming on Friday? Go, excuse me? What time are you coming on Friday? I said, no. I, I, I'm going to give you a gift. You give, I said, I know the time because we have to come in after the finished service. Mm -hmm. We're not going to get out of here until 12. I need a bit more. You know, it's not that you, you know, I'm charging you for that. But the way that the behavior, the expect, yeah. because the ex, I mean, like I was, I was giving them a, a, a deal here not charging them and it was so rude and two people i walked to the left and crying i remember sunday i walked out and the holy spirit don't even look behind you i just were going around she charged me so much mm -hmm. and yet she's not coming she's not telling me what time she's coming on friday to do my and i'm thinking like no and i just walk and you know what one of the leaders called me one day and he goes um how much do you charge to do all this deco I said, nothing. He looked at me and said, are you kidding me? I said, no. <laughs> he says, you need to stop. You need to stop because even the mic, they have to pay for. So you can't do this work that you're doing. That's right. And I said, okay. And you know, this is what I had to do. Uh, so basically, when they come to do it, I said, yes, I can, can do it or put a price to it. Yes. And so basically, they would probably get somebody else to do it. And when you walk in on, on their wedding, it's a mess because it's not done professionally mm -hmm. and you know as a professional person, how something is done. And I'm thinking just yeah. because you're charging now, they don't want to use you. They go and use someone else to do it yeah. who doesn't charge them. And I find in the body of Christ, this is how we treat each other, in which we don't have that love, that compassion for people that saying, okay, why am I going to steal my brother? Why am I going to borrow that money from whoever and don't pay it back? But you think they don't get away with it because you'll never get blessed because that person works hard for their money. Right. You don't know where it's coming from. You know they reach out to right. help you. That's and you, right. in turn, like the first caller has just come in, has not paid her back. And so basically this is how you find now in Christendom. And the next thing, Pastor Owen, as a, as a leader uh, running a church, what I would love to see again is when they're taking up the offering to tell the congregation, if you don't have it, don't give. That's right. If you don't have an offering, don't give. Because the reason why I said that, I've seen a many, quite a few people done that. And I'll sit there and stand there and I said, no, 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 don't do that. The right of an envelope, put so much and they put an empty envelope in the, in the no, um, no, collection. No, 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 no. And I think it's a bit just like... Um, Hold up your offering or bless your offering. Yeah. I don't know if it's a sheer embarrassment. They think, oh, I don't have, so I have to do this. And I find that was so, so, you know, sad. And I'm thinking, like, that needs to go across the board. If you don't have, let everyone have. Yes. Or you, whatever you have, the widow's might, you can do it. But to let the people know, if you don't have it, don't stress yourself. The Lord will bless you in time that you can give. That's and right. so forth and so on. And I feel, as a business person, if you're in there, as um, Minister Joshua yourself has said, you um, set up your business and mainly it's either you leave it or you don't. You know, it's either you get for the business, I'm going to pay you, here is it, your invoice, and such a time, 
And if you don't pay the money, you can't have the goods. You, you know, we need to get, collect the money first and so forth. So this is just my little um, talk about talking about the church and see so much. Not only just something I can't even mention on here, mm. but I'll see. I can't even mention because... It just it, proves it that it happens. It's, it really just proves Sorry? that it happens. I said it just proves yeah, that it, it happens. Does. Yeah, it does, yeah, it does. Yeah. And what, the worst part of it is like the the um, thousand pounds. And I've seen that uh, people walked out and you sit there and you look at some people and thinking, you don't have two pennies. Why are you walking up there standing in the house of God saying you have that thousand or whatever they ask for and you know in your heart it's the fear of god not there and there's the reason why i could say that i've seen it i've known it i've touched it mm. and it's amazing when you open up the envelope and half of it is poppers no wow. names on the envelope wow wrong name no addresses stuff i'm thinking to myself people. like what what have we created or what 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 has what has what has the church, um, why do people feel the need to want to do that? Yeah. You know you don't have it, yeah. Yeah. but you want people, it's like, and the Bible talks about that, you know? The yeah. Bible talks about that same thing that you mentioned about the widow's might. Yeah. Jesus was looking at the individuals who were coming up and giving these big offerings. Yes, yeah. yeah. But he didn't see yeah. that. He yeah. wasn't impressed with the big offerings. He, yeah. was looking, he was impressed with the woman who came and gave and, the widow's and, mite because and, he said that she gave from her mm, heart. Mm, mm. Yeah. You see, you have some people, they want to look impressive in front of mm, others. Mm, when these big speakers come mm. and they say, you know, so this, so that, they know they don't have it, but they're yeah. going up. And some yeah. people might say, oh, well, I'm walking up in faith. Okay, if that's what you're doing, then so that, that's between you and God. But some of us, we actually do it because we want to be we want to be seen. Yeah. Yeah. And as you said, when you open up the envelope, sometimes there's nothing in the envelope, or they just yeah. want to be touched by yeah. this special person because they feel yeah. this person is the anointed person. It's like, come on, so wrong. Yeah. come on, it's wrong. You know, yeah, so the thing is, yeah. you, you, the thing is, you may the thing is because you're, not only are you lying. In, in, um, to God, you're also yeah. like it's like you, you, the luck cause, because God knows your heart. He knows that you don't have yeah. it. So, yeah. So you, so you're you're going up in the congregation and you're you're basically lying. You're being dishonest. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and then other people are looking and thinking like, boy, she, well, then she's got money or he's got money. Listen, yeah. yeah. And this is this is what we've created. We've created this kind of this kind of fiasco within the church where people just think they can just do anything they want. And as you said, there's no fear. There's no reverence. No, um, no. And people are just doing these crazy things because they want to be seen by man. Oh, yes, yes. I Come was on, shocked when I saw it. that. Um, it's it's just, I was shocked. I yeah. didn't know people was that bold to do what they did. Wow. It's amazing. And I'm not talking one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a lot. Wow. A lot of <laughs> lot of them that they and like it's amazing. And even if it's a check, it's no, it's not done properly. Mm. And um, it's, it's, I, I, I thought to myself. Okay, I know that it's across the board here. I'm not naming names, but it do happen. Okay, and I'm not talking of facts. It's something that I know and touch, see with my own eyes. And um, mm-hmm. I hope that the Lord would really speak to the hearts of people. This is where yes, the reverence yes. and the fear need to come back yes. to the body of Christ, that we don't lie. From the minute I touch the church door, I reverence God, because I know it's a holy God. Mm-hmm. Holy, get ourselves together. Holy mm-hmm. mean whole. Be whole in your own mind, body, and soul. I stand there. I don't have it. I just don't have it. You could ask. I also say to Trevor, no, they're not speaking to me. God knows that I don't have a thousand pounds, but mm-hmm. it's not for me. So I'm not going to go up there. I said, no, don't bother mm-hmm. me. Don't get fear. I don't feel embarrassed. I said, no, because you have to know Christ for yourself. You have to know when the Spirit, you have that discernment to know. Right. Yes, I'm not. If I have it, yes. But if I don't have it, no, I'm not feeling anywhere embarrassed. Mm-hmm. You know, and God will bless you and double anointed yeah, on yeah. your life because you've been honest, you've been true. And we need to be truthful in the body of Christ. We need to get back to that place of holiness that we don't lie to our brothers and our sisters, our <laughs> ill-treat, our brothers and sisters show love. Yeah. Anyway, God bless you guys. Thank Good you for sharing. And I do hope that Thank it you. goes across the board and people who are listening Absolutely. and have their own views. God bless you. Thank you for sharing and, again. Um, See you soon. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. God bye-bye. bless. Bye-bye. Bye for now. Bye. Bye for now. I've actually, I've actually got two topics. 
from the from the two corners. Um, from Sicily, and um, just, just, just before you just before you give us those topics, uh, Pastor Owen, can you just finish off before you uh, finish oh, sorry, your, oh, your trailer? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, was ju- I was just saying um, that uh, you know I was I was you know I was talking to people about the cost it is to have the church, you know, to make sure the lights run and the the the, the heating and everything else. Mm-hmm. That everyone requires when they use the building. And, and some of them are very upset with me. So, you know, it's a church, you know, it's for the community. And, you know, it's, um, you know, someone passed away and you should have compassion. I said, I do. But I guarantee that the food that you're going to eat after the person has been paid, the sound system has been paid, the venue has been paid. Yes. So all that's taken care of. And then they complain about having to pay for the church. And that, these are the things. And, and I'm always saying that now, and I, I thank Sister Leanne, because she brought up something I would like to mention. Uh, teaching. Teaching in the body of Christ. You've got to remember that we're living now 40, nearly 50 years of a completely different teaching, as far as I'm concerned, to what? Scripture teaching. You know, when you think about the manipulation, i.e. witchcraft that goes on within the church, not all beer, I'm talking about witchcraft of, of, of twisting in people's minds and making people feel guilty and all this kind of thing. Because yeah. Remember, you have to be blessed to be blessed. Remember that. And this was a great song written. I'm too blessed to be stressed, and I'm blessed, and I'm blessed. But there are some people that don't have it, and they're not blessed at the moment, as she rightly says. There are times in our life when we don't have it. We? But we have to know God well enough to know that we, just like the widow with the two mice, whatever we give is all we have. So we have to be taught, and we taught again, that actually there's no shame in the fact that I don't have anything to put in the pot today. Because I don't have something to put in the pot tomorrow. And you don't know how many other things that I've been giving to throughout the year. You know, so sometimes I think a lot of it's about manipulation. Yeah. If I'm not, you know what I aspire about when she said it? Because I was, I was first in line with it. In the 80s, I got myself into a lot of debt in the tithing circle. I was a certain ministry. Um, you know, uh, they, they used to go on all weekend and all week. They used to have special teaching ministries and whatever. And then they have the offering. And the booster used to come. We used to call him the booster because that's what it ended up being. The man that used to come and do the offering and he would get everybody excited. <laughs> it's a skill. This is a skill. I think it's a skill, you know. So he would come and get everybody excited. And we were running down the front with checks, you know. I was writing checks that I didn't actually have any money for. But you see, they told us that if I give, then I'm going to get 100% back to, you know, 200, 300. You know, you start believing this. So now you want to give more, you want to give more, you want to give more. And now it's God's nowhere in the picture now. Now it's the case that if I give more, I will get more. It comes like a lottery. You know, <laughs> if, if the odds are better if I do this way. If you're not realizing and forgetting that God gave it to you in the first place. So whatever you get back, you can only do what God gives you. That's why a certain lady around me once come waving a church and uh, waving a, a check to come to church. I've come to bless the Lord this morning with the check. And I was very kind and a very gentle. And I just reminded her, please, before you wave your check, to remember God gave it you in the first place. And we get into that position where we start now trying to impress God with our giving. When we forget that he gave it us to give in the first place, yep. it starts becoming few silent speakers. And she's right what she's saying. There are times when I have it in my pocket to give. And times when I got in my pocket, I still don't give. Because if we don't give from a full and, and, and a holy heart, then no point in giving at all. Right. See, so we've got lots to reteach and teach because we have been taught some strange stuff. You know? It, that's why I said you lay hands on BMW, you can have it. Lay hands on the Mercedes, you can, that's what <laughs> we told. You know, just, just, just name it. Uh, you know, you lay hands on the five-bedroom house, and you can have it. Now you're going to say, no, I know someone's going to say out there, well, he can, he can. Of course he can. Of course he can. But like I said, Jesus walked by water, but 99% of the time he took a boat. Now what kind of God would give you a five-bedroom house if you haven't got the money to put the heat on? How stupid is this that we do? You see, I'm thinking, what well, really bothers me so much. We're ripping people off because we're in a bad place ourselves. She just said the one sister I called before, and I hear a story because we hear it so often. Somebody borrowed 80 pounds off her, borrowed 10 pounds off her. It started off with, oh, sister. So that's why I said, <laughs> when they call you brother, 
the police is still on something funny. Oh, sister, that's why it's happened that I just need this 80 pounds, like whatever it was. I need this. And then I don't see them for weeks and weeks after. And then you don't have the nerve to come and say, I owe you this money. Mm -hmm. I was so appreciative of some people, you know, because I don't want to miss the person that forgot. That sometimes somebody may have borrowed it off you and forgotten. That has happened to me many a time when someone's phoned me up and says, Owen, I've just put a thing into your account or I'm popping down to give you this. I forgot I borrowed this off you two years ago. And as a sister says, I never asked for anything back. I never asked you back because once I've given it, I see that given it's gone. It's gone. That's the way that I cope with life. I don't have to feel bad about you now. And I gave it. And if I get it back, well, bless the Lord, I can give it to somebody else now. You see? So I think we've really, really got to do better. But we've got to be taught it. Because a lot of these things, if it's not called out, then it's allowed. we are back to our thing, what we will teach about. If daddy doesn't call it out and say that's not happening in this house, then we assume it's okay. Hmm. So we have got to teach the church again. We've got to go back to that teaching of how we're supposed to act towards each other with honor, with integrity, with the news of the world all night. You know, I borrowed five pounds. Of course I might borrow five pounds from you, but I might be broke at the moment. But you know I'm going to go do all I can to give you that back. I don't go missing. And I would have... I think what happens so often, no one's taught us what you're doing is wrong. Maybe if we went back to the book of Acts and we saw how uh, Ananias and Sapphira, what happened with them, maybe holiness would come back to the church. We wouldn't be so quick to rip anybody up. Because remember what the prophet said. He said, it was yours anyway. God had given you all these wonderful houses, but now you just want to big yourself up. I think so. Maybe we've got some work to do in our teaching arena. You know, get some proper teaching. Amen. Not just have money thrown at us on the, on, on, on the stage so you can run all over it and step on it like it's nothing. Maybe we need to be better. Amen. You know, that's what, I'm, that's what I think it went by. Yep. Right. Um, Minister Josh, uh, the two points you got from the corner. Yeah, just, yeah, just two, two things. Came out. I've, well, um, based on something that... Um, just the just in the end I was talking about mm -hmm. where she gave the scenario about um the whole giving scenario. So what came to me was are you a cheerful giver or are you made to feel compelled to give? I think that's a very good conversation to wow. have. Wow. Wow. Um, I've written down and that's then the other one that's was a topic, the yeah, bro. Definitely. Yeah. And then, and then the other one was from the first quarter, she mentioned the word greed and gluttony. Mm -hmm. Um and the Bible does talk about greed and the Bible does talk about gluttony and I think it's a conversation that we could have talked about. Um, where people just want more and more and more, they're just never satisfied. Good. And I think one of the things that we have to we have to understand, and this this is for all of us, is that we are just mere stewards of what God has given to us. Mm. And when God blesses us, when He blessed Abraham, He blessed Abraham for Abraham to be a blessing. Amen. Um, Amen. So you know, when God blesses us, and when when God does what He, you know, gives us. You know, if God is looking at us and he's, yeah, and he's yeah, seeing yeah, yeah. what are we going to do with what he's blessed mm. us with. Not saying that we can... Unless us accordingly. Yeah, we, should, we, should, we shouldn't say, for example, not to say that we shouldn't, obviously, you know, um, I don't want to use the right, I don't want to use the word benefit, but we shouldn't um, get something from the blessings, but we are also, we're, we're mere stupid over what God has given to us, mm. and it's important that we are also a blessing to others. So God has given me this finance, so now he's trusting me to use it for the kingdom of God. Yeah. Yeah. Not for me to just keep it to myself and just be like, well, yeah, you know, I'm good, I'm fine, or I might just bless the certain little people in the circle. It's for us to be a blessing to others. How can I help someone else? How can I, you know, somebody might need something, they might be in need of shopping or food or whatever it may be. Um, so, yeah, so, so yeah, so, uh, those are good, two great topics I think we can talk about in the near future. So I've written them down. Good. Um, uh, uh, what was the, the first one? Greed? The first one, the first one was, are you a cheerful giver mm. or are you made to feel compelled right. to give? Because there are people, because some people do actually feel compelled. Yeah, yeah. Pre you're so, you're actually to... pressured. Sometimes you're you actually pressured, yeah, 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 pressured into such yeah. situation and made to feel guilty. Listen. Yeah. 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 Listen. Yeah. I've, I've, I know people who won't go to church because they don't have they don't have no money. 
because they feel as if, like, because of, let's say, for example, a maybe particular church establishment that they belong to, mm. and they the teaching that they've sat under, they've been made to feel that they have to have have to have offering, something yeah. to yeah. give. Yeah. I was once in that place. Did we all go for it? You mm. know what I mean? Because when you're when you're green and you're vulnerable to mm. the whole mm. um, new life and walk of Christianity, and when you're hearing these things, you think that these things, what you're hearing from Scripture, is the right thing. And you want to please God. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to do whatever I'm hearing coming from the pulpit. Only yeah. until you begin to read the scriptures and understand scriptures or you get the right teaching, you then soon come to the understanding that, no, I don't have to. This is not the way yeah. this goes. Yeah. You know, yeah. often we hear that scripture, and I don't want to go into this topic or digress, you know, Malachi 3.10, if you don't give your curse. Yeah. No, sorry. No, 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 yeah. no. You're what, just trying to what, use what, that to what, make me feel guilty or feel scared or compel me mm. to give money. Um, you know, it's a guilt trip. They use that scripture as a guilt trip. And I know a lot of people don't like to hear that, but that's exactly what it is. Yeah. We are no longer under the dispensation of the law. Mm. I'm not saying that we shouldn't give. Yes, we give, you know, um, but we are under the dispensation of grace. It's grace giving. And when we want to talk about tithes, it wasn't God that instructed Abraham to give uh, Melchizedek. that Abraham was the one that decided to do that. He made the decision mm. that he wanted to give Melchizedek. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah? yeah. So um, there's a whole there's a whole load of argument mm -hmm. as it relates to Pazma. We're not going to go into it, but no, I know no, no. that some just people, just the other the other topic yeah. that you, you, you the other and one. the other one was about the other one was about greed, greed and gluttony, greed, gluttony, and add manipulation yeah, to that as well. Mal manipulation. Yeah, because um, because um, the first caller mentioned yes, yeah, she yeah, mentioned yeah. the word greed. Mm -hmm. So I just thought that's you know the Bible does talk about greed. It does talk about gluttony, mm -hmm. and I think it would be a good conversation to have because sometimes people have and they just want more. And more, and more. Mm. They're just not satisfied. Just greedy. <laughs> we got, we got, um, less yeah. than less than twenty minutes to go, people. Interact and call the studio on zero seven five three four six one zero four double two. If there's anything you've heard, uh, um, and it relates to uh, uh, time that you have uh, uh, been through, you've you've, you've uh, been affected by by something you heard. We would love to hear from you. How did you deal with it? Who did you have to? Um, I fight your corner. Did you have to have, call in somebody to help the situation? Or did you work it out with the person yourself? Did the, the situation work out well in the end? Did the person see the errors of their ways? That were cheating you, robbing you, ripping you off? Just just you. Mm. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Stop, yeah. Talk, stop talking to you. Stop talking to you. Yeah, all these kind of things. Mm. People do these things, you know, bro. Of course. They stop talking to you. And then, of course. And then what you're are you bothering to yourself, me for? You know? What do you keep bothering me for? Yeah. <laughs> like you're bothering them. Yeah. They stop talking to you. They see you. They walk past you. And you're thinking like, mm. and, you still, and it makes you feel so uncomfortable. Because you're thinking like, I helped you. <laughs> the goodness of my heart. You're my brother or sister in Christ. Now, because you you don't well, you you've made you've obviously made a decision that you don't want to give me back mm. my money or whatever the situation is, and now you're just walking past me. Stay there, like you don't stay there. Let's take this call. No. Hi, good evening, caller. Hi, brother Steve. Hi, How are you, man? How you doing, bro? Yeah, man. Interesting topic. Interesting topic. Uh, uh, you got the radio on, Derek. You got the radio on, Derek. Turning it down. I'm oh, wonderful. Hear me better. Wonderful, loud and clear. I I, I press the O. Hi, guys. I'm going to live long past all, and I meant to call you today, and I didn't get round to it. But I'll call Anytime. you tomorrow. Anytime, bro. Anytime. No, man. Um, interesting topic. Mm. And what I want to say to you is, as Christians, the Bible talks about us, you know, doing our own due diligence. There are other words. I can't think of the scripture. But you know something? I will say from a Christian perspective, we need to more do our diligence when we're dealing with our brothers and sisters. Mm. I remember years ago, a lady came in a desperate state, needed some money. And I lent it out with goodwill and, you know, I'll get it back sometime soon. It didn't happen. And you know what? Then that happens. That creates a situation. And I then was told this lady actually had done this to several people in the church. And I'm thinking, hold on, how come the pastor didn't alert or even give a general warning to everybody about people with that character? Now, I'm not saying specifically that woman, but they didn't. Mm. And so after the event, um, I was told the pastor said, oh, the woman has done that to several people. But the challenge is, I'm also saying is, first of all, as a pastor leading the flock, you need to alert those who are maybe more vulnerable. 
And I was a new member of that church, so again, I would say potentially I'm vulnerable because I didn't know many people, I didn't know um, them to any great extent. All that glistens may not be golden. But what ended up happening, which the pastor was fully aware of that, he said, I would have discouraged you. Had I known you doing it, I would have not discouraged you. And one of the things that I think we'll all agree as well, sometimes it's not about money. If somebody seems to want to be borrowing money all the time, there's, there's, there's a deeper issue. So mm. you know something, here's some money, and then after they've used that money, then they need more money to do something else. But you haven't used what you've got wisely. But the point I want to make is that um, in a nutshell, uh, I, I personally have to say, when somebody comes and goes, I'm a Christian, I don't know to what extent. <laughs> and, you know, I'm more alerted when somebody says they're a Christian and they want to touch me for help or support or money, I've got my antennae going, you know. I have to do my own due diligence. And unfortunately, and I'm, I'm saying unfortunately, it shouldn't be like this, even more so if somebody starts to push this Christian thing on me. Because when they put it out that I'm a Christian, they're, they're trying to align some synergy with you and them. But you don't know them, you don't know their background, you don't know, or you may not, sorry, you may not know their personal circumstances. After they lend you that money, they might take off. You may never see them again. Yep, yep. But that was another thing that happened. When I heard this lady um, had done this, I said, no, she ain't going to get away with it. And I actually made sure I got it, but I got it bit by bit by bit by bit, which was never the same as me giving them the money in one lump sum. But I wanted to make a point. Now, what the pastor said, that why he doesn't encourage that, any lending like that, he said the woman was serving, that's another thing that I have to say, the woman was um, one of the ministers, so to speak, and um, that's even what also pulled me in. But he said, why you would have discouraged it is what will happen is ultimately, you may ask for money back, you may not, but then that creates a, a problem with you and them, yeah. and either they leave or you leave, or both of you leave. So all I'm saying, pastors also have to have that head on to protect their flock, right? And, you know, that person who... If they, who they, if they say, know about this situation, it is. Yeah, but, but, yeah. but, bro, the thing is, they said this lady had done it several times. Okay. okay. So what I'm saying is, yeah, 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 there yeah. was an issue, there was a problem that mm. somebody hadn't got to the heart of, and mm. I'm talking about the pastor, mm. right? So, you know, this is two ways, bro. This <laughs> yep, is two yep, ways. When yep, you, yep. When you got I, your pastor... Can I just answer you, Dale? So, sorry, can yeah, I just ask you, how, how was uh, the sister... Um, uh, uh, was she forthcoming when you when you approached her back for what she owed? No, I tell you, I tell you what. When I tell you what this happens to, and it does happen in the world as well, but I, I've seen it more in church. When you have to ask back for your own money, mm. oh man, you are so <laughs> feeling away. You don't want to do that. Mm. You know what I mean? But hold on, it's your money. But the person has not got, I will say, certain values, and I'm saying from a Christian perspective. That even if they couldn't pay you back when they said, what about, hey, bro, I can't give you this month, what about next month? But somewhere in their mind, because of the, I'm going to say bad-mindedness of it, that, that you, you, you just don't ask for it. Mm. And actually, they never intended paying you back that's anyway. Right, that's right, that's right, that's but, right. you know, the other thing I want to just put, put on this is that I innocently did this. I was actually married and I didn't tell my wife about this. And I said, Pastor Owen, he knows where I'm going with this. And, you know, I did this in good faith. And supposing my ex, my, my, which is now my ex, actually, mm -hmm. I, I found out, you know, that that creates another problem. Yeah. But I was genuinely just trying to help this lady out. Yeah. You know, but I'm, I'm, I'm not being funny. I think certain people play on certain um, sex, sex in the congregation. Mm -hmm. who maybe don't realise they're vulnerable, but they are. Because, you know, then I couldn't go back and say, hey, I'm, to, to my other half, I've lent this woman the money. Because he said, why is he lending the money? What are you getting for the money? You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about this one, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I'm being real. All I can say to anybody out there is be prudent. You know, the thing is, recently, I've had a few friends come to me and distressed. They've lent large sums of money. Mm. You know, the last lady was 10,000 quid. It was a friend that I always lend money to, and I get it back, and now I needed to do something, and I don't know where the woman is. Another lady, the woman lent her money in good faith, went back, said, you call her for the money, 
And then she said, she, when she got there, this is not good, actually. She opened up her cupboard and said, look, I've got no food in the... In the hold on, I thought I was coming to just collect my money. Right? Now, I know what she's doing. She's trying to tell her she, she can't pay her. Yes, right. But she yeah. went on the expectation that she would get her money only if she showed some empty cupboards. Wow. And I'm like, come on, man. That We ain't supposed to be doing that to each other. We ain't supposed to be doing that to each other, guys. Let's be upfront, transparent, and honest. And if you say you're going to lend something, that's what it is. But the moral of the story is don't lend what you can't afford to lose. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, well. Yeah. That's well. Yeah, you know where I'm going. Brilliant. But now, I'm just talking from the experience, bro, but you be diligent when brothers and sisters um, come to you. Absolutely. Even more so. Even more so. I've not had that issue with people out in the world. They say something, and that's how it rolls. But yeah. why don't we operate as a people like that? Yeah, but now, good topic. I love Thank it. Thank you, I bro. I saw that. I said, I've got to chip in on this one. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you, bro. Take care, man. Bye. Bye for now. Um, we, we've got thank you bro we've got um, uh, less than 10 minutes to go I know somebody was trying to call in if you want to call back please do so interact and call the studio on 07 534 622 sorry Josh I think we cut you while the caller was calling in no I can't remember what I was but doing stay there alright just, just stay there let's take this call hi good evening caller hi um, good evening good, good evening hi. Um, hi sorry I can't hear you now that I'm phoning you. That's okay. Um, Just talk in the phone. You can hear us. We can talk. Yes, I thought you was on YouTube and I thought, no, oh, no, no. It's the other one. Um, hi. So I'm phoning in anonymously. Okay, um, yeah, I've please. managed to get the last 30 minutes of the chat. Mm -hmm. And I just want, I probably missed a lot. And I don't know an awful lot, but there was something that I was studying at the time and I can't quote your scriptures, but I could just say that I'm not well off. I'm not well off. I'm a single mom, and I've always juggled my finances like many people. Mm. I use my spreadsheets loads. Um, and I couldn't for a while tide. And before that, to be honest, I didn't really know the huge significance of tiding. I did a financial biblical course, understood a lot more, thought, oh, actually, you know, I can. And I didn't do tiding to be blessed. I did it because I felt it was... I had a responsibility to do it. Good. Um, and there was a time where I really couldn't hide financially and I was starting to struggle and, you know, read through some scripture and realized, hey, hold on a minute, I can give my time. Yes. So it's when not, I couldn't it's not only hide, monetary. yeah, I, I realized, hey, hold on, you can give your time, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. can help someone in some way, you know, sometimes even food, sharing of food can yeah. be a form of tithing. Yes. Um, and I know I need to read more into it, but it was literally a stage where, you know, I did what I could to to help out financially, to tithe financially, should I say. And then when I couldn't and I was really struggling, I did it with my time. And I actually prayed about it. And I remember crying out to God and saying, Lord, I can only give you my time. I don't have anything else that, you know. And then I was getting confused with, do you tithe from just your earnings or do you tithe if you're getting some earnings and you're on benefits? Because, you know, you know what the whole way of tithing, no one's really answered that question. So I just said to myself, do you know what? If it's 10% of your income, well, a benefit is still an income. So I included that. And there were times, I think, you know, I was thinking to myself, God, I could really do with this. But I thought, do you know what? I'm not going to hold on to things and withhold from you what you have enabled me to have in the first place. And do you know what? God always provided for me. Amen. You know, Amen. there were times it was a squeeze, but God always provided for Amen. me to a point where then I said, you know what, Lord, I'm really struggling a bit now, not for any fault other than my own. I know what I did to get myself back into debt when God helped yeah. me to get out of it. Um, and I understand that it's important to clear that debt because if you, you know, you owe money, you know, do your best to pay it back because yeah. you'll lose your reputation, you'll lo lose good standing with the person if you've borrowed yeah. something. And, you know, it's not that I went around asking for anything. It was people asked if you had a need and they gave. And it's not that it was things were borrowed, but if some people said, look, I can loan you something. I, I must admit there were times I just didn't say no, because when you are desperate and needy, yeah. that's w what you tend to do. But then afterwards you think, oh my gosh, I've actually got to pay this back. So what can I do? Do you know what I mean? And yeah. I think... I think this issue about tithing really needs to be explained to um, 
Christians who aren't that mature. And when I say not that mature, you could be mature in other ways spiritually, but maybe you don't understand the financial side. Mm. And I've learned to live with whatever little or luck that I have. And yeah, I can't right. remember if that's on Peter or James, but I know that I read it and it helped me to understand that, you know, whatever little or whatever luck that I have, God always provides Amen. for my needs at yep. that time, whatever it is. So, you know, he'll show me to where I've got food in my cupboard. He'll show me, you know, you know, the one thing I remember is that um, when manna fell from heaven for the Israelites and they were told not to, I can't remember if I'm getting it right now, so please forgive me, but, you know, not only to take what they needed, not right. to save That's things right. for the next That's day right. or something. And I realized that because God wanted them to rely on him mm. for their mm. daily needs. Mm. Mm. So I've learned not to worry about yeah. it all. That's right. And mm. where I felt the pressure at times, yes, because maybe the church wants to buy a new church or wants to have the money there in place. You know, I've been through that and I felt a bit guilty thinking, OK, I've got to do this, but I budgeted for it, but I budgeted the smallest amount that I could give. Um, Sorry, so it's just I thirty think, seconds more. Just thirty seconds oh, more. Well, I've been I've been sort of caught up with people who have said, you know, if you do this, you'll be blessed. And I didn't do it because I wanted to be blessed. I did it because I wanted to be part of like a church family. And then when I did things, I realised, hey, hold on a minute. People knew about this particular family in the church that were using people like that and mm -hmm. making things down spiritually to make you feel you had to. Yeah. Definitely. And then I realised, hey, I've got to stop this because I realised that I mine and my own were doing without. So thanks for listening. I, I, I'm God definitely going to try and get this on rewind. Um, <laughs> thanks for contributing. And, uh, anything. All right, then. Thank you. All thanks. right. Thank you. God bless. Okay. God bless you. God bless. Okay. Bye -bye. Um, uh, Minister Kessler, you just want to uh, give us a one minute uh, uh, round up for one minute. We'll come to the end of the show. That's a nice show. Um, what came to me as, as our sister was speaking, I know she was talking about the whole tithe thing, um, but she also talked about, um, you know, borrowing and whatever, etc. And what came to me, I think there's a scripture where it says, um, oh, no man, no thing, or oh, no man, nothing. So it's important that when we borrow um, or we help someone or whatever it may be, and we've made an agreement that we honor our word. You know, I mean, I believe the Lord is holding us accountable Amen. tonight. So there may be somebody out there tonight listening. You know that you've taken something from somebody and you have not honored your words. And maybe the Lord is speaking to you tonight for you to make it right and do the right thing. Um, so I want to encourage you to do that. We have to present ourselves. Um, if we're saying that we're Christians, if we're professing to be Christians, we have to be seen to be doing the right thing. And Amen. I want to encourage you to do that. You know, um, and as I, I'm just going to close with this scripture because of time. The Bible says, you know, my favorite scripture, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. With all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will certainly direct your path. I've enjoyed this. Amen. Show. It's, um, it's been fantastic. Amen. So, God bless you, bro. Indeed. Pastor Owen. Yeah, yeah, bless you. It's been a wonderful evening. I uh, just want to remind everyone that, you know, teaching is a wonderful thing. And, you know, we've been told so many things around giving and money and money and money. But, you know, it doesn't matter how much you have or how long you live. It's what do you do with what you have? Yes. What do you do with the years that are given to you? What are you doing with the money that's given to you? What are you doing with the time that's given to you? And as sister said, she tied some of her time. So, you know, there's many ways that we can do this thing. But teaching, let's go back to the foundations and recognize that everything we have, well, the scripture says, what have you got that wasn't given you? So everything we have was given by God. Let us use it wisely to the building up of the kingdom. And that's building up each other. You Amen. know? Amen. You know? Well, bless you guys. Thank, thank you so you. much. God bless you. Th people, thank you for joining us again. Um, uh, join us again uh, real soon. And uh, we will have another great topic. But um, uh, let your conscience be your guide and know that. What's in the dark always comes to light. And know that Amen. God is always watching. When man can't see, he sees, all, sees it all. All right, so God bless you. We will see and speak again real soon. Spread the word, tell your friends. Chat about each and every Tuesday, 8 till 10 p.m. We're out. Good night. God bless. Bye for now. Bless you. Take care. Bye, everyone.